In this video, we're going to look at bounce and export options in Pro Tools. There are three basic ways that we export game audio from a Pro Tools session. Bounce to disk, bounce to tracks, and export clips as files. First, let's take a look at bounce to disk. Bounce to disk is the most straightforward way to get your audio out of Pro Tools and onto your hard drive. Bounce to disk takes the output of a bus, typically your stereo mix bus, and records it to a file on your hard disk in real time. This is probably the simplest method for exporting because it doesn't require any additional setup on your part. But the disadvantage is that you have to repeat the process for each clip or portion of your session that you want to export. There are a couple of things you'll need to do before you execute the bounce to disk command. First, if you're exporting to a lower bit depth, you'll want to make sure that you have a dither plugin instantiated as the last insert on the master fader. So I'll choose an insert on the master fader, I'll go to multi-channel, dither, and I'll choose the power dither plugin. As I've previously mentioned, the power dither algorithm is the best algorithm that Pro Tools has to offer. So you'll want to make sure that you're using this one whenever possible. We'll want to make sure that the target bit depth is set correctly. And there are three noise shaping options. The first type is optimized for simple program material like spoken word or solo instruments. The second type is optimized for material with a limited dynamic range, like rock music that has been run through a limiter. And type 3 is optimized for program material with a wide dynamic range, like a classical orchestra. For the music we're about to bounce, I'll go ahead and choose type 2. The next thing I need to do is designate the area that I'm planning to bounce. In this case, I just have a simple 2-bar music loop, so I'll go ahead and choose the 2 bars plus a little extra so that the reverb tails aren't cut off. Then to initiate the bounce command, we can go to File, Bounce To, Disk, or we can use the key combination Option Command B on the Mac or Control Alt B on Windows. Then the bounce dialog will appear. In the bounce dialog, you'll want to set the bounce source, which for us is our stereo mix bus, the destination file type, which is typically WAV, but might also be MP3, the format, mono, multi-mono, or interleaved, the bit depth, and we've already determined that our target bit depth will be 16-bit, the sample rate, and you can see there are a lot of options here, but we're going to keep it at the native sample rate, which is 44.1 kilohertz. Next, you'll see conversion quality, which offers options from low to tweak head. Now, many years ago, you might choose low because it would take the least amount of time. On a modern computer, there's really no reason not to choose Tweakhead every time. There are a few other settings in here, like enforcing Avid compatibility for Media Composer, conversion options, which include convert during bounce or convert after bounce, importing back into the session after the bounce, adding it to your iTunes library, or sharing with SoundCloud. But we'll just work with the defaults for now. So I'll go ahead and click Bounce. The Save Bounce Has dialog will appear, and we'll go ahead and type in a name for the resulting audio file. Then when I click Save, Pro Tools will go ahead and execute the bounce. It's a good idea to go ahead and audition the resulting bounce file just to make sure everything sounds the way you want it to. Next we'll take a look at Bounce to Tracks. Now it's important to understand that bounce to tracks is a recording technique. It's not actually a specific command in Pro Tools like bounce to disk. In order to set up bounce to tracks, what we'll need to do is create an auxiliary input as a summing bus, and then a new audio track where we'll actually do the recording. So in the new tracks dialog, I'll go ahead and make one new stereo auxiliary input and one new stereo audio track. And we'll go ahead and switch over to the mix window to configure these. Because we're using the aux track for summing, I'll go ahead and rename it sum. And then I'll rename the audio track record. Next we'll need to take all of our source tracks and route them into the summing bus. By selecting drums and shift clicking on pad, I can select all four tracks simultaneously. Then by holding down option shift on the Mac or alt shift on Windows, I can assign them all to the summing bus at the same time. Next, I'll route the output from the summing bus to the record track. And that's it for the routing. Now, if you need to run an ultra maximizer on your mix, you'll want to make sure that you insert that on the sum track. And then set the ceiling and threshold to your desired levels. 
It's important to remember that you never insert dither when bouncing to tracks. Now we're ready to execute the bounce. I'll go ahead and make my selection, record arm the record track, and then I'm ready to go. And now that we've recorded our mix into another track inside of Pro Tools, it's time to look at Export Clips as Files. The Export Clips as Files command allows you to export clips from your session to an audio file on your hard drive faster than real time. It will also allow you to export multiple clips simultaneously. In this case, we want to export the result from our bounce to tracks. So first we'll want to go ahead and select that clip. And this is a great opportunity to name the clip something more meaningful. Next, we'll go to the clip list pop-up menu and choose Export Clips as Files. You could also use Command-Shift-K on the Mac or Control-Shift-K on Windows. Then the Export Selected dialog will appear. So first, we'll select our file type, and in this case, we'll go ahead and do an MP3. Format, which we'll leave it interleaved, we'll leave the bit depth at 16-bit and the sample rate at 44.1 kHz. Conversion quality tweak head, and we can leave the rest of the settings at the defaults. We will, however, want to choose a destination directory. And now we're ready to export. When you choose MP3, you will have the option of setting the encoding speed and bitrate, as well as some additional ID3 metadata. Then when I click OK, Pro Tools will go ahead and export the clip as a file. One important thing to understand about using export clips as files is that Pro Tools automatically adds a dither when reducing the bit depth. So there's no need to insert dither plugins on any of the tracks in the session. Once again, it's a great idea to audition the file on your hard drive to make sure it sounds the way that you want it to. So those are our primary bounce and export options in Pro Tools.